I will be available for people to come in and sit. Okay, so please do that right now. Thank you. All right, and after that, um, mentors, you can take seats as you as you will, but if they fill up, um, you can help with prep for our um, after event um, snacks that are outside as well. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, since then, in, in all the work I've done, 
Um, I always stop and ask myself um, about how accessible, how engaging a college campus can be to individuals. And the reality for me is that over time I've come to realize that it isn't always exactly as welcoming as you can imagine. I mean, I just took down the Jefferson Davis statue a couple of days ago. I can't imagine for some people as they walked by that 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 could have been the most welcoming thing they ever saw in the world. There's also this notion that you have when you show up on a campus, and frankly, it may be pretty close to the first time you've ever been on a campus as extraordinary as this, that sense of fitting in doesn't come so easy. I, I still remember one of the most painful moments I ever had here as a faculty member at UT. Um, it was the very first gone to Texas that we held in the College of Natural Sciences, and a uh, young woman uh, from uh, the Valley had come to Gunnell, Texas, and we had on the order of a thousand or so college and natural science students out there listening to a band and eating pizza. She was sitting over on some steps by herself, quietly walked over to introduce myself, and, and I said, oh, wow, so uh, why did you come to UT? She said, because it's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. And then she was gone a semester later because she ended up not living on campus and not being a part of the university, and not feeling like she fit in academic, academically, and she was gone. I, I kept up with her, and there was nothing that could be done for her. She felt, almost in that moment, she sat on the steps forward, that this just doesn't, this, this wasn't the place. Uh, that always ate away at me, the idea that we could waste uh, someone like that, somebody who put 18 years of blood, sweat, and labor into getting here, and then she's gone. So <clears throat> when I stop and I think about what it is that this place should be for you, um, there are ways to view it in which we're patronizing, in which we feel like we have to like make excuses so that you fit in. And I always think that's such a terrible thing to do, because after what so many of you have done to get here, um, the uh, toil, the, the tumult, this pressure, this pushing constantly to succeed, so you rise to the top of your class and you show up here. Darn if once you get here, you want to be treated as anything other than somebody who is on that next step to being something great. And that really is what the University Leadership Network is about. It's about positioning you so that when you show up here today, from the moment that you arrive here, right here in this room, forward, you say, it's just not a matter of whether I'm going to fit in. I'm going to expect that that's a given. It's a matter of you preparing yourselves to lead. The University Leadership Network expects that its membership, its 500 student cohorts, will, by the time they graduate, be absolutely the stud and stud -ets of this campus. The people who, everywhere they go, they shine, they stand out. And that doesn't happen just because of what you do in the classroom. It's what happens because of the way you carry yourself on this campus. We asked you to dress as nicely as you could to show up here tonight because that's the beginning of the process of you taking your rightful place on this campus. It's interesting how we sometimes lose sight of the fact that this campus is about a lot more than just what you do in a classroom. I have lots of success programs people participate in, Gateway or TIP or Discovery Scholars or EOE or whatever, and those are great. But the money you're getting, your financial incentive program scholarships have nothing to do with your academic performance. And instead, everything to do with you as an adult. And not just as an adult, but as an adult that aspires to be a leadership, to be a leader on this campus. Well, so, wow, that's that's, that's a lot. That's expecting an enormous amount from you. Thank you so much. I'm not all choking up right now. I mean, I could be, but mostly I didn't yell for a while. It's this idea that you're going to show up on this campus and be more than just like an adult. You're actually going to rise up above others. Rising up above others happens not by accident. It happens because of the experiences that you're going to have. So when you're out there and you're seeing lots and lots of other folks you know running around, doing all kinds of things that are fun, that are enjoyable to them, that are fitting in in that way, 
Oftentimes, you're going to find yourself doing something entirely different. You're going to find yourself going through leadership training. You're going to find yourself doing service learning, writing letters to veterans over the holidays. You're going to find yourself sitting down and writing reflections on how you've changed as a person. And you think, gosh, that's kind of kind of not fun. Like, it's not like going to 6th Street or, or to West Campus or to a party or something like that. And yet, those are things that anybody can have. I mean, if all you wanted out of being on this campus was to go do that, well, why go to school? Just get a job in a bank and head off somewhere and, and have those parties. But you're here for something very different, for something very special, and that is about how you're going to change yourself as a person. What we put together in terms of the programs that you'll participate in so that by the end of your first year in college, you just feel different on this campus is going to be remarkable. You know, I used to say that there were only three kinds of students that I could recognize were actually acting like adults after being here for a couple of years. One was the kids in the McComb School. The kids in the McComb School, they show up, they show them how to shake hands, they show them how to look you in the face, and talk to you directly. It's like, yeah, all right, like an adult. This is so cool. You know, a college student acting that way. The Terry scholars would do the same thing. They would say to their students, yeah, it's great what you do in the classroom, but how are you going to be outside the classroom? Are you going to look somebody in the eye and you're going to shake hands and look at them and say, yeah, I represent, I am what I am. And now the University Leadership Network is out. It's the kind of program where not too long from now, with the training you're going to get, you're going to have that kind of confidence about yourself. And what's amazing about that is that once you're armed with that, once you're armed with that self-reflective understanding of who you are and that confidence that you belong on this campus, you're going to be able to go out and find amazing experiences made available for you over the next three years in internships. That word network is meant on purpose to represent the fact that you are going to be networking. Now, the idea that you show up on campus as a freshman and think, oh yeah, networking, that's the thing I'm going to do, I would imagine you're thinking, never in a million years would I have thought that's who I am. And yet, you're going to find yourself realizing that as you walk from campus partner to campus partner and network with them and figure out, is this a good fit for me for my internship? Is that a good fit for my internship? And where you're making those kinds of choices, boy, you sure are acting like something much more than just somebody who bubbles in the right answer on a multiple choice test. You're something so much more than what most everybody on this campus is doing, which is just being a student and going to parties. So, yeah, people sometimes complain about the work of being in the University Leadership Network. And I think, yeah, it is work. It's hard. It's hard to step up that way. It's hard to have to put up in this way when you'd rather just sort of crawl out of bed somewhere and, and, and try to escape. And yet, what you're going to look like on the other side of it is just going to be the most remarkable thing. Imagine this resume that you're going to be putting together as you graduate from this university four years from now, and you've got these three substantial internships that you've done. Think about what that does for your career. Think about that, what that does for job prospects. Think about what that does in terms of the confidence you have in yourself about who you're going to be. In, in, in reality, that's, that's what college should be. And sometimes, as I think about this, and I think about how we started this University Leadership Network with 500 students a couple of years ago, and then the 500 last year, and the 500 this year, why isn't everybody doing this? Why isn't this what college is? It's kind of funny, the, the new president of the university talks about how it is that we've got to do something to replace this traditional sort of you sit in a classroom and you memorize and you bubble in the answer and that's that with the experiential learning on this campus that rises up and allows you to take advantage of this glorious set of assets, this glorious set of treasures we have on this campus. And that's what he wants to see. And I think to myself, oh, we're already doing that. That's already happening in the University Leadership Network. I can't wait for next year. Next year we will accept our fourth class and we will have almost 2,000 University Leadership Network students on this campus, 2,000 of you. I was just talking to um, Dr. Smith a couple minutes ago about those classes. How are they hanging in there? How are they doing? 
because you all know where you came from, you all know your background, you all know what you had to do to overcome where you were, and you know what it's going to be like on this campus. It's not going to be easy. The classes are hard. The demands are hard. And yet she was telling me that 480 students returned from last year for um, last year's class, and there are still 460 or so students from the class the year before. Those are stunning numbers. Those are absolutely stunning numbers of the persistence of students in the University Leadership Network to realize very quickly after they arrive on this campus that this campus is their home. That they don't have to think about home back in Houston or home back in the Valley or home back in West Texas. That this is their place. That when it's time to wake up in the morning at the end of the summer, it's time to come back home to this university. I guarantee you that's not the way it used to be for what many of your older brothers and sisters had to go through, but it is what you experience now. I have an expectation of you, and my expectation is a substantial one. My expectation is that you represent the University Leadership Network with enormous pride, because what you are doing with this really and truly is saying that there's an entirely different way to do college. There's an entirely different way to take advantage of being on a residential campus. And that burden on you is going to be substantial. It's going to mean that you're going to have to stay on track to graduate for four years. It's going to mean that you're going to have to put yourself into awkward places where maybe you doesn't feel so comfortable that first day on the job in a new internship. And yet, you know, if you fight through it and you struggle through it and you take advantage of the friends that you're going to make and of the amazing um, uh, resources provided by Dr. Smith and her team, that you will, in fact, do that. I tell you, I, I talk to Dr. Smith about this all the time. I say, don't screw this up. Because <laughs> I do. Because if this works, it's going to profoundly change how we view how higher education should be. And the people who are going to make that happen are going to be you. Last year, it was the end of the year, and it was time to find out how the ULN was working. And uh, we had um, set up a thousand chairs over in um, the ballroom of the uh, union. And I'm thinking, how many are going to show up? I'm darned if there weren't a thousand of you there. Like, whoa, this is pretty great. I mean, it just brought tears to my eyes to see those thousand people still there, fighting and struggling and growing up and representing. This year, what are we going to do? <laughs> We're gonna, we have a deal with uh, Gregory. Bring the, the Gregory deal. So we'll be up to 1,500 at the end of this year. And you all will be there. And then 2,000 next year. Your commitment to this, your commitment to knowing your responsibility is enormously important. <coughs> And I hope you appreciate how much I appreciate the fact that you stepped up to do this. I sound awfully serious. I like to tell jokes a lot. But I don't feel like telling jokes right now. Because when I looked out at all of you, I was so proud of what I saw. Because I knew that next generation was coming in. That next generation where some of you are going to get your 4.0s and some of you are going to get your 2.0s. I don't care. We've had plenty of presidents with 2.0 GPAs. <laughs> But what all of you are going to be, what all of you are going to be, is the kind of person who, when you walk across stage at graduation, people step back and go, whoa, there's somebody who got everything they needed to do out of this university. There's somebody that's going to go out and really and truly change the state of Texas because of the time they spent here. I want you to look around at each other. Right now. Just look around. You are the future. You are the future of the state of Texas. You really are. It's not in Texas, it's not UT 50 years ago, where if you looked around, what you would have seen would have thought that Jefferson Davis statue was pretty great. <laughs> the new Texas is very different, and it's what you all are. Thank you.
The man that just walked out of that door is the biggest champion for undergraduate education on this campus. And we are really privileged um, to be working under such great leadership. So it's great um, that he was able to come and speak to us tonight. Um, are y'all excited? Yes! Does anybody remember during orientation when I pointed to you what you said that you were? Anybody remember? Okay, we're going to try it one more time. So, Texas 19, who are you? Leader! That is what I'm talking about. Oh, that was good. That was should be the orientation um, for, for August, where we had like 10 students, and I still made them do it. It was, it was not quite as big as that, but now they got to see the full effect. Okay, real quickly, um, I would like to take a minute to show you what you're getting into. Anybody want to know? No. No? Yes? Okay. Let's take a look at what you're getting into. And then I'm going to take a few minutes to introduce um, our staff to you. And then you're going to hear from your first year coordinator. And then we're going to go enjoy some Jim Jim's water ice. Awesome. You will see. It's, it's code for snow cone. That's, that's what happens when you come to Austin. We have all these unique restaurants. It is water ice. No longer a snow cone. All right, I'll be here with you. My name is David Wadi. I am a professor of chemistry and the senior vice provost for enrollment and graduation management. One of the reasons why I became interested in creating the ULM is built upon my experiences with a 500 student section chemistry course. In this course, I would find that the vast majority of the students tended to do very well, but there was always a population that tended to struggle. When I started to sort into why that was, there were the usual reasons having to do with academic preparation. But there was another key piece to why it was that students weren't successful. And that had not so much to do with whether they were academically prepared, but with whether or not they felt like they belonged to the university. This is why. One of the primary things we do for students in the University Leadership Network is to let them know right from the very beginning that in fact they do belong. We're just leaving high school and we're all in the same shoes. We don't know exactly where we're going, but we have these people here who are trying to help us. All the amenities that students might need in terms of space and a home on campus, a place to be, is really the environment that we've created. And we aim to help those students by providing a four-year scholarship while giving them leadership and professional development skills along the way. Whether that's talking to you about time management, talking to you about career choices, whatever it is, you're sitting there listening to somebody talk to you who believes that you will become one of these individuals. If you look at a lot of the historical data on students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds, what usually happens is that first bad thing that hits them has them thinking, maybe it's time for me to go home, maybe it's, I don't belong here. But instead, within the ULM, they learned that this is, in fact, something that uh, they have to expect, and yet that they will survive. The beauty of ULM is that it provides the students with funds based on the work that they're putting in by participating in our weekly meetings and in their internship hours. Um, but it relieves them of that stress of being stressed about money. I'm here on, you know, grants, scholarships, my parents don't pay anything for me because they can't afford it. So the scholarship is something that helps me keep on doing the things that I want to do. They're making sure that I'm financially able and stable to focus on my schoolwork. This really is about this idea of mindset. If you have the right attitude, if you have that right emotional, psychological, mental perspective of yourself, then you're just as good as everybody else and you're going to be successful. I'm a graduate and I'm going to have a degree from the University of Texas and I'm going to be able to throw up my hookup for the rest of my life. All of the opportunities that they have for me here, I just appreciate it and it's, it's so much that I can get from this that I feel like I couldn't get anywhere else. Programs like the ULM allow us to send ambassadors back to those disadvantaged communities to say, yes, UT really does care about me. You imagine that taking place year after year as we populate the state with the future leaders. That's a pretty impressive thing.
ULM staff to come up on board. I'd like to introduce um, our assistant dean, Dr. Harkins, as well. How many of you have been to the UT Commons? Okay, so let me explain to you. The UT Commons is our space in FAC 334. It is your home. Yeah, anytime we have to we have space for you to study. We have space for you to sit down and eat lunch. I would ask you that. How many of you have like a weird two or three hour hole in your schedule? Look at how many of you have time to come and hang out at the UT Commons. I just saw all of you. Okay, so we expect you to come by. It's your place. Um, so Assistant Dean Harkins uh, is over the UT Commons. So she is over University Leadership Network in addition to the TIP Scholars Program. So we share a home with the TIP Scholars Program. Um, let me go around the room really fast. I'm going to end with your uh, year one coordinator. So our year two coordinator, I think, is actually outside. Um, David Romero, he is outside. Fabulous. Let's give him a round of applause. scoop on how to get all of you to study abroad. Pretty exciting. Okay. So we have been doing a little thievery from financial aid as well. So this is Denise Furman right here. And our administrative associate and she takes care of all things behind the scenes but you know why you want to keep her happy. Anybody remember? Cha-ching. Cha-ching. She's in charge of your scholarship disbursement. That is exactly correct. So we always want to keep Denise happy. Also, I'd like to introduce to you our campus partner coordinator, Tapera Holman. She is in charge of all things experiential learning. So he is behind um, the internship fair that you all will attend this spring. Okay, and also helping to arrange experiential learning for all of our year three and four students when we have a where's my Texas 17? All of them are going to be my year four students next year, right there. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to introduce um, Mr. John Newton to you. He's our first year coordinator. So we'll welcome him. Woo! I also stole him from financial aid as well. So when you have specific questions about financial aid, if you haven't already discussed it with your financial aid advisor, who's your number one source of information for financial aid, John is also really helpful um, in problem solving and um, helping you get connected with great advisors over in the financial aid community. So let's welcome your year one coordinator. Hello everybody. Hello. I know I've met uh, most of you during orientation. I just want to actually formally welcome you to the ULN program. I'm very excited to get Just a couple of uh, housekeeping uh, that I want to go over uh, first, uh, but before I go on, uh, I do want to recognize our mentors once more. When I mentioned during orientation that I... <laughs> that I was your, uh, your primary resource for the UN program as your first year coordinator, uh, they are the extension of what we have planned for the first year. They are your support, they are your coaches, they are your resources. So I'm um, very happy that we have this wonderful group to work with you in your small group sessions uh, after the lecture here. So you can really get down and into the, the detail of the uh, material that we're covering on the Tuesday lecture. And they can also meet new friends in your peer groups and start establishing those relationships for a certain network in that way too. So. Uh, you're going to find out that your small group is going to be very valuable to you as you go on through this year uh, in, in both support and in uh, friendship. So please be mindful of that. A couple of things before we get going. Um, I'm not going to take too long here. But the uh, uh, things that you needed to do before you need to get started, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Everybody here is registered for our UGS 017 course, correct? Yes. Okay, if you are not, and you're a little shy about raising your hand right now. Uh, contact me. I prefer email. You all should have my email. You should all have me as a contact. So my stuff's not going to your spam folders. 
And you want to make sure that your email is current with the university as well, the one that you want us to, to have and send information to you. Everyone should also have direct deposit set up with the university, tying in a bank account number with, your, with the university. Uh, that is imperative. That needs to be done or you're not going to be able to receive your ULM scholarship disbursements. And Mr. Furman is going to be contacting you saying you need to still set up direct deposit. This is why you haven't received your disbursement. Who remembers when the first scholarship disbursement is going out? <laughs> okay, so you just said precedent. You just said precedent. That means you are reading the emails. That means you're reading them all very carefully. So I'm never going to have a question asked of me with the information that we've already provided. So in that regard, the primary sources of information you're going to get from our program is through Canvas. We have a Canvas site. If you're not uh, able to see the Canvas course, you need to let me know. Because that's either because the registration for UGS 017 or because there's a few of you, I know Longhorn Band members are not able to register for our course. So you, if you're a Longhorn Band member, then you need to notify me so I can, I have most of, most of you already taken care of, but you need to notify me so I can get you attached to our Canvas course. We'll be sending out announcements through Canvas. We'll be sending out reminders through Canvas. We'll be sending out helpful information through Canvas. And everything that you need to do uh, for the course of this semester is in Canvas too. You want to check your settings for your notifications, making sure that the email attached in Canvas is the same one where you can, that you're reading most often. So if we send an announcement out there, it's going to notify you that something's been published in Canvas. So make sure you check that as well. Um, all of you should have purchased thank you, should have purchased your subscription to SquareCap. If you have it, you have a few more days until next Tuesday's lecture. As I mentioned during orientation as well, SquareCap is the software that we use to be able to ask you questions like I just did, but you can submit the responses through any Wi-Fi enabled device, your tablet, your phone, or your laptop, and we're able to see that real time. So if there's a question I want to know to gauge the lecture and I'm talking to you and I want to know how you're feeling about a certain topic, then you're gonna, I'm going to ask you a question, you submit it, and we can throw it all up there. We can do word clouds, we can do graphs, we can do all sorts of stuff but you need to be able to, to uh, utilize that functionality. So if you have an issue, either because you don't have a smartphone, there were a few students last year who didn't have smartphones, but uh, then, or, you know, the technology to be able to use it, don't see anything, I'm trying to work something out. Um, when you use SquareCab, and your mentor's gonna go through in more detail about this, you must always connect to the Wi-Fi through UTexas. That's the only way we can receive your responses. If you do not, if you use your 4G network um, or, uh, some other means, then we're not going to be able to see your responses to capture attendance. You want to be familiar with the program policies that you're all, we're going to hold you accountable for this, to know what the policies and the procedures are regarding attendance, regarding scholarship disbursements, and if you're kind of already got a couple of hits for not.